going to talk about two unique product lines, one for hair growth and the second a unique vitamin C complex. This is the hair growth system, and it's got some unique um, items in it. Uh, acetyl tetrapeptide 3 and clover flower extract are really the important ones here, and the idea here is to reduce the enzyme 5-alpha reductase that converts testosterone to DHT, improve the ECM proteins to strengthen the papilla, and reduce inflammation. And those are the three things that you want to do. And red clover has got uh, biochannin A on it, and it's an inhibitor of 5-alpha reductase, and we'll call this ATP3, uh, uh, improves the proteins here. And uh, this is looking at the capacity of bioclanin A to modulate the activity, uh, and this is an experiment they did. The cells were plated and incubated and uh, looked at, and what you see here is a significant reduction uh, in the bioclanin versus uh, control and versus e, uh, C, uh, EGCM, uh, and this shows the inhi inhibition of 5-alpha reductase. So in the laboratory, this seems to have a very, very good effect. Here's another one looking at the ATP3 uh, on collagen synthesis, so to build up the hair in human fibroblast cell lines, and you can see here a 35 percent increase in human fiber cell lines with ACT, uh, uh, ATP3, um, showing better integrity and better anchoring. Uh, and this is also now uh, also in vitro, uh, the synthesis of ECM proteins, and again, this is incubated cells. And you can see here both collagen and lamellin uh, increased significantly and also showing this in the fibroblasts, again, for better anchoring of the hairs. This was also looked at in ex vivo uh, hair follicles, and it was incubated with ATP3 or control. Uh, and you can see here that uh, after day eight, there was a significant increase uh, in stimulation of follicles ex vivo. Uh, and there was also an experiment here going against the gold standard, which is minoxidil, to look at this again in explanted follicles. And you can see here a 52% increase in minoxidil versus a 156% in, uh, increase in ACTP3. So the conclusion is this works significantly better in uh, culture, uh, in ex vivo, I'm sorry, follicles uh, than minoxidil did. So a clinical study was done, uh, 30 volunteers, 20 drops uh, in an area. They looked at digital trichograms of 200 hair samples um, uh, and subjects collected shed hairs also. Uh, you can see here, um, this is the trichogram, increased antigen and decreased loss. Uh, the ATT uh, increased 46 percent after treatment. You can see the thicker hair here. And in clinical analysis, you clearly see at 30 days here, thicker hair, and here are some examples. So the short of it is, in this system that you can package yourself in the office, it works. It works nicely uh, as an OTC adjunct for hair growth. Uh, and I think that's very, very nice to be able to have this to offer our patients, especially our female patients, that we don't have a lot of options for, and I use this in combination. Next is radiant vitamin C. This is a vitamin C uh, a, a product here, and the idea we heard very nicely, this is an antioxidant, reduces melanin synthesis, and this is a special improved stabilized form uh, of vitamin C. Um, which uh, the idea is, can it work better and can it uh, penetrate better to improve the activities that vitamin C is supposed to do, uh, like collagen synthesis. Here is a study of 30 patients. They looked at MEDs, uh, which is an important thing on the inner arm, and this is just an example, the treated versus placebo, showing a significant uh, decrease in hyperpigmentation that occurs from UV. Um, this is a clinical example of hyperpigmentation improvement with this product. You can see that here. And here's some examples versus just ascorb ascorbic acid uh, of this uh, compound here, which provides better collagen synthesis than ascorbic acid. Uh, you can see here a test period, uh, again, looking in vivo studies here. Uh, showing the significant improvement after 56 days uh, versus a control. Um, uptake uh, content, the idea here is you get better uptake uh, into the uh, keratinocytes than you can with um, uh, plain ascorbic acid or vitamin C. 
uh, and you get better prevention of UV damage, uh, as shown here, showing a improved cell viability with this versus ascorbic acid. So the benefits here uh, is that you can uh, uh, get a low percentage uh, to reduce melanin synthesis, uh, increase collagen, uh, increase collagen synthesis twice as much as of uh, plain vitamin C. You get better penetration uh, and 50 times uh, better delivery of the vitamin C. So essentially, the idea here is that private label dispensing, there are two benefits to it. One benefit is that you can have top products that you can have in your practice that gives a constant reminder to patients. There is no website of competition, and I think this is important. There are many wonderful cosmeceuticals out there that are branded cosmeceuticals that I sell in my office. The problem we have now more and more are patients going up to the counter and essentially looking at their iPhone and, and even scanning the product and saying, this is a great product, I want it, but I can get it cheaper down the street or on the web. And it's very frustrating. They can't do that with your own branded product line. Um, also, from what I've shown here, there are some unique products you can use to complement what you're using with branded lines uh, that may have unique ingredients here. And I think that is uh, certainly one of the benefits to get uh, that. And in addition, some of these cosmeceutical companies can give you custom active formulations. You can work with them to develop your own product line, essentially. So I thank you. We will uh, move on from there and uh, again enjoy uh, the rest of the session and then tonight uh, very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mark.